Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Black Geyser with me, Bring It On. I'm gonna go back to Scofarth real quick and turn in a couple quests. And after that, we'll take some time and speak to our companions and see what they think we should do next. At once. I await your instructions. So here we have the quest to turn into the fisherman, and we need to track down Hara or Hera. Hey, Rupert. Oh, there she is. Off I go. Yes. How convenient. Like greetings, Donald. Have you met my family's souls by any chance? Ah, uh, yes. They have their final peace now. Yes, I sense their spirits passing. Thank you. As for your reward, I found an expensive magic item by my husband's stock. Please take it. Hope you'll find it useful. Oh man. <laughs> Option four. Uh, thank you. I wish you all the best. No, it's I who should thank you. Take care. 9,000 experience. Three level ups. Alright, uh, bargain and persuasion. Man company. Growing. Some new spells now, and another casting of Vigilance. Take care of the spells before I forget. Mm -hmm. right, so I've seen both of those before. Abyssal Gaze is the new. Now, the spell fills the heart of its target with fear by making them peer into the horrible depths of ethereal planes. It flicks panic to the target. Grab Mystic Bulwark. We've seen that before. We know what it does. I'm listening. Now for Helgenhar, uh, Brewing and Drying. What's the points in outdoor survival? That's maxed out now. I might go ahead and max out war clubs and hammers. That way if I have any good hand-me-downs for my main character, I can give them the Helgen Har without worrying about him taking a, a penalty. And vigilance. Yes. A Biala, learning and research. Magical perception. Rods and staves. That's some new spells. A uh, brick fall. Summons a rain of bricks to fall on you to your enemies for three turns. Don't think too hard about whose wall they came from. Deals two to twelve pulse and blow damage to affected targets. Chain lightning. Upon being cast, a crackling stream of lightning springs forth from the caster's palms, damaging the target on arrival. The stream will then jump to further hostile targets in range, damaging them in the process. I like how it specifies hostile targets. So it shouldn't have any friendly fire. Uh, deals 2 to 8 heat and pulse and blow damage to the target. Inflicts stun to the target. I'm definitely going to grab that. And then melt away. The spell envelops its target in a cloud of corrosive fumes. Inflicts dissolving and weak to the target. Grab that too. That'd be good for boss fights, I think. I'm always ready. You need only ask. Alright, then what do they give us? Scudioctus? Or is it Scudioctus? I don't know if it's supposed to be a Latin pronunciation or not. A base dodge chance 6%. A plus 37% to slashing and heat resist. Plus 10% to stabbing and cold resist. Plus 25% to pulse and blow resist. Plus 30% to strain and pain resist. And plus 3 to dexterity. So effects on being hit. A chance to inflict minor lightning to the target, 5%. This armor is named for the magical material of a rare species of golden beetle called shock wings. This insect can be found all over Ismereld, as is detailed in many scientific parchments and chronicles. It is often collected and sold by young boys to alchemists who, through the painstaking work of decades, have learned how to extract a rare substance from the tiny glands of dried beetles. The substance is able to absorb lightning, and after proper treatment, produce it. That's pretty good. I don't want to lose my block chance. Let's give it to her yes. instead. 
Yeah, she loses a good chunk of stabbing resist. And a little bit of pulse and blow resist, but I mean, it's definitely worth it, so. And it looks cooler, so. Two I reasons to get equipped. There? This is the fisherman shack, right? Yeah. Alright. How much greed did I gain for that? Pretty good chunk. Can I help you? You have the fish. I've got your fish for what it's worth. They look a bit the worse for wear. Good way to say that. Hmm. Thank you. Now let me see. Oh no. Just look what they've done. The tiny little blighters. My poor, poor fish. Damaged, dirty, and bent. Inedible. Still, you did your job and all. Here's a little spending money, and this is my trusty fishing trident. I used to take it waiting in the shallows. I'll just take the trident. Uh, thank you for the trident. But a fisherman works too hard for me to take his money. Uh, very kind of you, thanks. You're welcome to my shack anytime you happen by. I await your instructions. Right, let's go talk to our companions and see what they have to say. I'm listening. Oh, we got uh, another party level. I'm going to grab Shared Burden here. I want to check something real quick. I await your instructions. Alright, so 162. The Shared Burden. Uh, the weight limit of all party members are increased by 40%. And then Adapt and Overcome. Each party member deals 5% increased damage against targets with a lower health percentage than theirs. And each party member receives 5% less damage from attacks made by opponents at a higher health percentage than theirs. So either way, you're getting some sort of benefit. Alright, so 226. I do this, what happens? So I have no idea why we can shift these around like this, because it doesn't change the effectiveness of the ability. Hmm. I'm listening. Alright. Uh yes, Donald? What do you think we should do next? I'll leave it up to you, my friend. All your instincts. Okay. Hmm? Uh Hamlin? Ugh, I can't believe this. Now you tell me what a about that portrait was so darn important. It makes me furious just to think on it. That painting was my ticket into the Isselbright Guild of Thieves, sometimes called the Thieves Guild, or Cut Purse Cooperative, or the Robbers Club. I was to deliver it in exchange for full membership, as well as a tidy pile of gold. Ugh, I say. Yes? Alright, Soraka? What do you think we should do next? We've already read that. Yes. Viala? What are you hoping to achieve for yourself in the near future? I'm glad you asked, Donald. I've been waiting for an opportune moment to ask a favor. Uh, very well. What sort of favor? There is something I need to do, and I cannot do it alone. Since you and I are bosom traveling companions, I was hoping you could help. Uh, yes, I'm willing. What do you need? The problem is Warden Haft, the Mage's College where I'm studying. Inconveniently, I've been banned from the library. There's something there I need to, uh, borrow. Why were you banned from the library? Well, the story is too, too droll, Donald. I don't suppose you have much experience with academia, but it is a haven for baboons and vipers, masquerading as men of learning. Amongst this menagerie, uh, there resides a certain Vandalroth, I embarrass this baboon before his peers. Accidentally, I assure you. The upshot is my access to various facilities. The library, orrery, arboretum, etc. has been revoked. The mess I am still free to patronize, but the food there is awful. 
Too much salt and everything. What do you need from the library? A book. Surprised? The title is Trials of the White Elves. It contains answers to certain questions I must have answered. It worn halves is the sole copy. Now perhaps I can retrieve the book for you, since I haven't been banned. As far as I know. If only it were so simple. But no. Only students and faculty are allowed access to Wardenhaft's library. Then how do you propose we get our hands on this book? You're a capable man, Donald. I'm sure one of your many talents applies here. What are you good at? Sweet talking? Invisibility? 100% discount. Anyone with magical ability could apply to the college and become a student, but that seems rather boring. In the absolute worst case, I could apologize to that baboon Mendelroth, but please, to Lindia, show your mercy. Don't let it come to that. All right, let's go get that book. Excellent. And I could depend on you, Donald. At once. All right, let's go take care of that real quick. I'll suppose that'll take super long. Then we come back to the Vintner's Grove afterward. At once. So I'm a little disappointed that I didn't get an alert for Biala's quest. For Hamlin, it would tell me Hamlin wants to speak to me about something. But not the same for Biala. I have to stay on top of speaking to them every now and then to see if they have something for me to do. I assume it's tied to main quest progression as well. That's usually how companion quests are handled. At once. In games in general, may not this one necessarily. Isn't this spell named after this guy? Yes. Oh, this one has an E. So maybe not. I maybe he's named after the spell. Or we spoke to him before, let's see. How can I get access to the library? I don't really want to enroll as a student. I'm listening, off I go. Yeah, won't well, let me sweet talk my way past him. Where's Mendelroth at? He's upstairs. At once. We can also sneak by, I think. I mean, Hamlin's not a great... He's not great at stealth. He might be able to make it inside. Whatever is it you want. I'm a very busy... Mendelroth. Biala. Now, my name is Donald, Lord Espen. I've been admiring your lovely college. Yes, yes. Is there something that you specifically need from me? I'm keenly interested in arcane lore. As everyone knows, Wardenhaft's library is the best in the land. That is well and good. We can have any old soul stumbling in here and getting their dirty paw prints all over our rare works, hmm? Accepting faculty, which you clearly are not, and never will be. Library is restricted to the students, or some with a special di a dispensation. You can also enter as a guest of someone currently enrolled. I don't know who's going to help you with that, unless I see Biala in my office in a state of extreme contrition. This little visit may indeed turn extreme, but not in the way you hope. How would one apply for this uh, dispensation? I could grant such permission myself, I suppose, but not without good reason. And? Can you find such a good reason? It's good that you're so eager, 
but the task is rather unpleasant. The school sailor has a very persistent rat problem, you see. Greatest of these resilient rodents, I shall submit your dispensation forthwith. Oh no, not that. The only reason he's doing this is to humiliate me. You see that, don't you, Donald? Ah, uh, yes. That was the, if that's what needs to be done, I'll do it. Ugh, I feel sick. Godspeed. I, off I go. All right, your standard rat slaying quest. At once. At once. Oh. Marie Rumlick and Beans. I don't want to kill Beans. Excuse me, sir. Yes, it's me, down here. My name is Marie. A talking rat. How did this happen? Be cursed by some wicked sorcery? Not precisely. My little sister and brother and I were nosing about in the sewers and found a delicious syrup at the outflow of a drain. It must have been a magic potion. But soon after we grew such smarter, and now we're even able to communicate with big folk. Not that it's helped at all. I miss my dolly. Hush beans. Let the man think. Well now I can't simply kill you, but if you stay here, someone else certainly will. We can't get back to the sewer. We're orphans, you see. The other rats don't understand us now. They hate us. They're also much bigger and uglier. And I've got a bad leg. But, or sorry, they, 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 they'll bite us. Alright, here's a solution. Yes? I feel like three is the best advice. If they just go to the kitchen, eventually Mendel Roth is going to send someone else to kill them in the kitchen. But a bargain of persuasion is more at my alley than shady dealing, so I think I'm going to go for this. Just so I don't risk failing it. You don't have to get back to the sewer, but there must be somewhere else that's safe and warm. What about the kitchen? Yes. Yes, it's not too far. I think that would work. Do they have grain at the kitchen? Yes, they have all kinds of food there. Hooray! Thank you so much, sir. I promise you won't ever see us again. As long as you don't ever visit the kitchen. I await your in- Off I go. Alright, easy peasy. We technically at once. <laughs> took care of Metal Ross rat problem. So where is the kitchen at? Let's see if they actually move there. They did not. At once. What is it now? It is done. You can't see those rats in the warden half cellar ever again. Excellent. Here's your dispensation. Had it prepared against your success. Now I believe we have one more piece of business. Lady Biala owes me an apology. Aside from assuaging her own conscience, it means the full reinstatement of her privileges at warden Haft.
Sure. Abiala, you gotta set this silly grudge aside. Apologize for the, uh, goat incident. Put this whole sordid chapter of your life behind you. Yes, I see your point. Professor Mandelroth, I humbly apologize for the unwitting part I played in the demise of Aldabarth, the greatest goat to ever graze the green fields of Yarengal. I mean, if she killed his goat, she definitely has to apologize anyway. I mean, that's not nice. Poor goat. Well, thank you. I'm glad you're finally able to appreciate the deep wound that his passing caused me. Now, please excuse me. There's nothing uglier than an old wizard's grief. I off I go. I'm not talking to him again. I'm listening. What is it now? I actually have pressing business elsewhere. Oh, good. I trust you need never bother me again. Mm -hmm. There? I mean, based on his portrait and name, I expected him to be a little bit more antagonistic. At once. Oh, library, that's right. Lady Biala, as much as I'd like to allow you inside... Ahem, <laughs> Severin. Professor Metaroth and I have set aside our little disagreement. I have been reinstated. I'm as free to use the library as any other student of Wardenhaft. Really? Never heard of a student being reinstated after such a... Well, you're welcome in any case. Please. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm going. Leave no bookshelf unturned. The Trials of the White Elves. Rare and ancient book sought after by Biala Adelis to discover the history of her diadem, the Third Eye. In this treatise, I shall recount the history of the Feld Feldagug, also called the White Elves. Theirs is a tale long and tortured of long and tortured hardship. Uh, yet they per uh, persevered and still stand unbroken, despite the challenges they have faced. All details of, the tra of their travels and adventures have been acquired from credible sources among the Feldegug themselves. The line can be traced back to the elves of forests, the Roni elves. Ancient tribes conquered the woodlands, spreading north and south from what is today called Isilmerald. These adventures led them as far as the frozen reaches of the northern realm where a handful of groups managed to settle. This I consider to be the first trial of the White Elves. Dargomir, son of Bor, uh, the Lord of Frost, took an interest in this secluded tribe. Both saddened and angered that mortals had largely avoided settle settling in his snowy realms, the demigod collected one of these stray elven factions to forge as his own. Dargomir erected a vast and impregnable stronghold of ice and trapped the elves inside. His captives were sustained by an enchanted spring of clear, freezing water and deep sea fish drawn inside by an underground river. They said they lived in this crystalline prison for a hundred years, and during those hundred years, their bodies and souls were changed utterly. When Dargomir finally released them, the elves emerged as pale creatures with white hair and opaque eyes who gazed upon the snowbound plains with inexplicable familiarity. These were the Feldegug, and the Frost Lord's newborn people rapidly began to explore and claim his icy domain for themselves. This new species of elf was perfectly adapted for the hostile north. Not only did they survive it, but it rose stronger than ever before. This I consider to be the second trial of the white elves. There were, however, other altered traits in the Feldegug. The demigod's pawns had somehow developed an intelligence, wisdom, and self-esteem which he had never planned for. When Dargomir presented his creations with his plans for, the, for their future, namely to serve as his subjects forever, the white elves refused. Dargomir was furious, ready to wipe his children from the face of Yarngal at a stroke. 
and said that when he conjured his sword of ice to strike them down. Bargomir realized he was about to banish himself back into the void of loneliness. He only just managed to escape. The demigods' rage cooled. They sp spared the Feldegug, instead granting them complete freedom to do as they will. In turn, Vlados split into six separate tribes, each seeking their own territory and ways. Four of these groups left the icy plains to explore south, while two remained to guard Dargomir's, Dargomir's domain. Ever since those times, the Feldegug have labored under the constant scrutiny of the people of the south, striving to prove themselves worthy. This is the third and final trial of the White Elves. I await your- off I go. Yes? Go ahead. I'm listening. I said we just talked to her about it, right? I'm always ready. Hey. Hello. You wanted to talk wanted to talk. Acquiring trials of the White Elves was the first step. Thank you for helping me. And yeah, now I can't talk. <laughs> I need time to thoroughly review the book, take notes, and absorb what I learn. Of course. Take as long as you need. Thank you. Hmm? There? Alright, I assume we'll get an alert when she's ready to speak. Also, Hamlin just leveled up. We'll take care of that here in a moment. Hmm? Bring and drying, disarm traps, bows and arrows, and I'm actually gonna not continue with small blades. I'm gonna give him points into. Oh wait, no, he mind. He can't. I was gonna do pole arms. But I guess we're gonna do small blades instead. He can't use pole arms. You need only I'm ask. Listening. What, is your wish? what next? What do you wish of me? Ready Go to ahead. serve. Hmm? At once. All right. Now we go to Vintner's Grove. Oh, what can you do with a drunken Rillo early in the morning? Way hey, and up he rises. Way hey, and up he rises. Early in the morning. The seventh bloody time. Can you please give up that idiot melody? I'm so dizzy, I can't even lie down properly. How about, oh the dizzy spawn of a big blue genie. Like that better? Ha ha ha. You always know how to make me laugh, Nerid. Oh, who's this? Hey there, adventurer. Wanna join us in song? But fetch us more of that strong grog before you do, eh? So let's just pass to the north a while ago. Can't be far. Alright. Cool, we got our next lead. These guys are already hostile. Let's go take care of the foxes real quick. I shall not flag until we prevail. I'm listening. I off I go. All right. Uh, let's see if they have anything else to say. Can I help you? Way hey and up he rises. Can I help you? 
Yes. Greetings. Greetings. Go ahead. I go. Armor looks green. They have magic weapons. So it looks like he has the same bow that Hamlet has. I'm listening. Hmm. There? Might be able to pickpocket him. Off I go. Give it a shot. Alright, that makes things a little bit more difficult, doesn't it? <laughs> Alright, you know what? I'm not gonna worry about it. Alright, I'm gonna call the episode I here, believe. and the next one we will explore Vintner's Grove, and possibly track down the Liquor Thieves, finally. And uh, see what else this place has in store for us. For now, thanks for watching, I'll see you guys in the next one.